I had to be doing something. So I was riding the bike. I rode a bike a lot to, to, to lose the first initial kind of weight because my, my bones were just hurting so bad. My body was just broken. And I learned to get over that also. And I tried to swim a lot. I wasn't a great swimmer, but putting fins on kind of equalized my body. I wasn't so negative buoyant. So I started finning a whole bunch. And I spent hours in the pool, hours in the pool, trying to get more and more comfortable. Not because I was going underwater. I was so scared of the water that I had to live in the water. I had to become one with the water. So going to the pool used to scare me. So I went to the pool an awful, awful lot. And then the bike got easier. I was able to run more. I went from like one mile, one mile was a great accomplishment, two miles, and then from two to three was a big one. Then I went from three to six. And then like they have a warning order that they give people to get ready for buds. And the whole thing was running six miles, five days a week. And that was my goal. And so I just kept, I failed, I go back to scratch. I used some positive motivation. I had like one day where I was like fucking defeated. But I started realizing this is part of the process. This is part of the journey. I had to realize this is part of my process versus just saying, like I used to, I'm just not good enough. If I'm not good enough, we always say that shit. I'm just not good enough. And then we try something else. I'm going to fucking make myself good enough. And that became my mentality. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make myself good enough. And so I misunderstood a lot, but that's, that's all it came down to. I made myself good enough. And the days I couldn't run that far, the next week, I would do two a days. So I, on the running, if I ran a quarter of a mile, I wait a fucking couple hours. It haunt me, bother me. I try to run a half a mile the next time. Same day. You can do more than this. If I had to walk, I had to walk. It just became just a process of grinding and grinding. And grinding is not even a good word for it. It's not even a good word for it. And just, just going further and further. And then when I got through running, I go to the bike. I go to the pool. If I got tired somewhere, my legs were tired, I, I go to the gym. And I developed this crazy workout where I was doing volume, like two, 300 reps of like very lightweight. People always say, you know, how come you don't have any like loose skin? My workout routine in the gym became sick. It became sick. I was just doing two, 300 reps, 400 reps on like chest, just like for one simple exercise, the bench press. And I would rack it, get back on it, just rep it out, trying to burn as many calories as I can, build that muscle mass. And I just became, just became obsessed with it. I didn't care. I didn't know any better. I didn't think about it. Wow. I didn't, I, I, I didn't know that working out that hard would fuck you up. I, I, I pushed it extremely hard. I, I went way beyond what I thought was capable. Like my first ultra race I did, I was, uh, I was heavier. I was in Iraq, you know, the Marcus Attrell Lone mm -hmm. Survivor. I was in Buds. I was in three hell weeks, as you know, as I said a million times. And I knew a lot of guys that died in the operation. I was at free fall school with Morgan Luttrell, who was his twin brother, during the operation Wet Wings, where Marcus Luttrell was the only survivor. I knew Marcus Luttrell well. And I was about 200 some odd pounds, and I didn't run hardly at all at this time. I, I was a SEAL, but I was like a bodybuilder. And I did an elliptical trainer 20 minutes on Sunday. That's all I did. I, I, I found a foundation, the Special Operations Warrior Foundation, and I Googled the 10 hardest races in the world. I knew nothing about ultra running. The first I'd ever run was 20 miles at one time. And so what came up was the Bad Water 135, 135 mile run through Death Valley in the summertime. So I went an ultra runner, didn't know what ultra runner was. I called the race director up, Chris Kosman of the Badwater. And he said, are you an ultra runner? And I was like, I don't know what that is. He goes, have you run 100 miles in 24 hours or less? I was like, no. But I said, I'm a Navy SEAL. I was in three hell weeks. I was a ranger. I gave him some resume. He didn't give a shit. He said, I don't care. You got to qualify for my race. And the deadline was up in two months for this Badwater race. And basically... He said, there's two more races you can do to qualify, and I might consider you my race. We select top 90 athletes in the world, and you're not even an ultra runner, but I, I, I like your cause, like what you're doing. He said, uh, I call him up on a Wednesday, <laughs> and he goes, there's a race on Saturday in San Diego, San Diego one day, where you run around a one-mile track for 24 hours, so many miles you can get. If you get 124 hours, I will consider you in my race. I did the math, 14-some-minute mile, fuck it, I can do that. Dumb shit thinking, I'll tell you that right now. It was rough. Worst pain I've been in my entire life was this race. So I have my wife at the time, she's now my ex-wife. We go to Walmart, get a blue lawn chair, Ritz crackers, and mileplex. That's what I'm going to have for a 100-mile run. 
So, show up at the start line of this race. It was the AUA National Championships. It's like the best ultra runners compete against each other to see how many miles you can get in 24 hours. And I'm this big bodybuilder looking guy with a shirt on. How much did you weigh back then? I would say I was at least 230. At least it may have been more. And jacked. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was ripped the fuck up. I was I had big old chest. I was big. I, I was I was jacked up. There's a picture of me. You definitely didn't look like someone who could run 100 miles. No, not at all. So basically, I start running, and I get to about mile 40, mile 50, and I'm feeling pretty good. I get to mile 70, and it was a, the the worst pain of my life. I sat down in this blue lawn chair at mile 70, and my the Ritz crackers after mile 20 became Ritz cracker balls I wasn't hydrating correctly I didn't know what to do I was drinking Myoplex for my nutrition because I couldn't eat these Ritz crackers have very minimal water if any at all and I was just dying so I sat down in this blue lawn chair as I was watching all these runners go around in this circle I was all dizzy and lightheaded hadn't gone to the bathroom it's been about 12 hours I went 70 miles about 12 hours which is good and I looked at my ex-wife now and I was like I am fucked. And I started seeing like three of her. And once my body stopped, my mind just went off. And I had to go to the bathroom. And the bathroom was like, it's like 20 feet away from me, if that. And I couldn't. And so I sat there and peed blood down my leg and started crapping up my back. And with 30 miles to go, I, and my feet were broken. I, I was just in the worst shape. Because once you stop running, not running like that, I mean, I hadn't run in almost a year. I was just doing bodybuilding stuff in 20 minutes on the elliptical trainer. I probably ran no shit, no shit, no more than 50 miles the whole year. <laughs> that wasn't my thing. I wanted to be like Jack. You know, I, right. I, I, I didn't want to be cardio guy. I wanted to be ripped, big Navy SEAL guy. And, um, and the day before this race, it's funny, this guy named Joe Burns who put me through my hell weeks, a SEAL guy, he's one of the hardest guys out there. He was in the gym the Friday before I did this race, and he was doing a full body squats, deadlifts, power cleans. I said, "Fuck it, man!" I don't, you know, he, he's a guy that approved me to do this race. He, you know, he, you know, he gave me the approval to go do this race and signed off on it. So I'm in the gym. I went in there and did a full body hardcore squats, deadlifts, and everything with this guy, because I knew he was gonna come watch me in this race. So I've always been about, all right, man, you're going to see me come in here and jack this weight, and tomorrow you can watch me do a 100-mile run. <laughs> what do you can think about that? So <laughs> basically, I paid for it. So, at my, so he came out there with my favorite thing, chocolate, you know, mini donuts, because he knew my story of, of, of my past life, and brought six mini donuts out there, and I had my hat pulled down, and at mile 70, man, it was torturous. And with blood down my leg and 30 miles to go, I... Uh, I started reaching the cookie jars, man. I started pulling off all kind of stuff. I reached in my mind, and a lot of us, when we have bad times in life, even the hardest person in the world, we forget how badass we are during that hard time. I have a thing where I take a couple seconds to reflect on, oh, hang on, man, you've been through, been through this, you've been through that, you overcame this, overcame that. I don't ever close my mind to the fact that this can be done. And I knew I had to get up, I needed nutrition, I needed hydration, I needed to get, stop being dizzy. So that's the first thing I did. I didn't panic on I had 30 more miles to go to get 100. I thought about the process. Slowly but surely, I was able to stand up, and I was literally hobbling around this track, just walking. No running at all. I couldn't run. My feet were in the worst pain. This is the worst pain I've been in my entire life. Nothing in any training is even comparable to this last 30 miles. And what happened was my ex-wife looked at me and she's like man you're just we, we agreed i'm not gonna make the time i was going way too slow and at that time at mile 81 something clicked that i'll never probably be able to do again when my mind body spirit soul everything just connected and my mind knew i wasn't fucking around anymore it knew i wasn't going to quit it knew that guy was dead and buried and gone and i was going to die out here on this fucking well mile for, for whatever reason why i was going to get through this motherfucker I didn't give a damn. It made no, there, were, there was no fucking crowds. There was no trophy at the end. There was, I wasn't even in a race in my mind. There was, it was nothing. It wasn't about nothing. There was no nothing. It was a bunch of people who didn't know who the fuck I was. And it was me against me. And I used all these different dark places to start bringing out light and just fucking going deeper and deeper. Ended up running the next 20 miles. I ran 101 miles. 
and I ran the next 20 miles, ran at about a 10.30 pace. And I did 101 miles in 18 hours and 56 minutes. Sat back down in that blue porta potty, now my chair that I got from Walmart. And that's when the body realized I was done. And this great feeling came over me, but also the worst pain in my life.